There's a good chance if you came to this video, you went to go take a photo of a sunset and it came out looking like this right here, where everything seems kind of underexposed, or like this right here, where everything seems kind of overexposed. So this is a very common roadblock that new photographers struggle with is properly getting exposure for sunset photography. So I'm gonna dive right in with a super beginner friendly and a very easy technique that you can do today to help try and achieve sunset photos that look like this right here. I was down in Florida earlier this month and I decided to get some sunset photos. One of the issues that you might run into, especially when you're getting a sunset photo over water, is the foreground is incredibly bright. So we're gonna merge a few photos together using Lightroom and it's pretty simple to do this. The first thing you're gonna wanna do is take a photo to expose for the sunset itself. This is gonna make your photo look like this where the foreground is very dark, but the background is exposed properly for the sunset. The next thing we're gonna do is try and take a photo where it's kind of balanced between both having colors in the sunset and a little bit more foreground elements. The third photo we're gonna take is an overexposure shot where the sunset's not gonna be visible at all really, but you're gonna get a lot more details in those foreground elements that you absolutely missed out on those first photo or two. Now that we have our three photos, let's jump right into Lightroom and talk about how to merge these together. So as you can see here, the three photos that we took, I exported right into Lightroom. We have this photo right here exposed for the foreground, this photo for the water, and lastly, this photo for the sky. The first thing you wanna do is come into your overexposed shot and you're gonna to wanna to edit for the foreground here to make sure it looks like you want it to look. So I'm just gonna bump up the exposure, maybe increase the contrast a little bit, take down the highlights, bump up the shadows just a bit. I'm gonna add a slight S curve just to make it pop just a little more. And then that's it. We're just doing a very basic base edit. After that, let's go ahead and jump into our medium exposure shot. You know, the one with the water being all nice and bluish. And we're gonna make micro adjustments for the water. So let's just go ahead and bump that up just a little bit here, increase that contrast, take the highlights down a little bit, maybe decrease the shadows just a little bit. And again, I always like to add a slight S curve because I just feel like it makes it pop a little more. And that to me is looking pretty good the before and after. And lastly, we're gonna come into our final underexposed shot where you see the sun in pretty good detail. And we're just gonna slightly expose for the sky correctly. Same thing, maybe add a little contrast, increase the exposure a little bit. I always like to take down the highlights a little bit and everything, maybe increase those shadows and again, that slight S curve. Now a very common, more advanced technique for blending these exposures are in Photoshop where you export these three photos into Photoshop and with layers, you paint on what you want. But this tutorial is for those beginners out there not really looking to dive into the wonders of Photoshop. So what we're gonna wanna do is hold shift down and then click all of your photos, right click, and then we're gonna jump up to photo merge and click on HDR merge. Now that's gonna think for a little bit and generate a preview for us. And Lightroom's basically trying to determine what parts of the image to use for each part of the image. So here's a low resolution image of what the image is gonna look like when we hit merge. You can leave all these default settings and I would recommend playing around with this de-ghost amount. Right now you see it at medium. You can set it to low and it's going to make the blending less aggressive. Set it to none. And if you set it to max here on high, it's just a little bit more aggressive on how it's doing it. That's why I like to do medium because it makes it look like a bit more natural of an image. Once we're satisfied with how it looks, we're gonna go ahead and click merge on the top right hand corner here. It's gonna do the performing merge action up here in the left hand corner and give it just a few seconds. And here we are with the final image results. So now I'm gonna go ahead and do some quick editing so I get what I like out of the photo. But for the purposes of this video, I am not going to show you the full edit. And now that I'm done with my full edit, I'm just gonna go ahead and export this real quick. So the process I highlighted in this video is a very entry level, very beginner friendly tutorial. There's a lot more advanced techniques like I mentioned earlier, but when you're first getting into photography, don't be afraid to just settle with the easier techniques. And it's gonna at least train your mind to think, you know, what can you do in post to create the best image possible. If you have any questions at all about this process, please let me know down in the comments and I'll catch you in the next video.